Oh, was I already zoomed in all the way? I was trying to start off with a beautiful, nice close-up of that pendulous inflorescence there on that metanella, but I... Well, that was a fail. Nothing wrong with trying. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. Hanging out in the growth space. You can see I'm hanging out in the growth space. I forgot that I'm supposed to take this, knock it down there so it's not quite as loud when I'm filming in here. I don't have really much of anything planned for this week, except that I need to switch out this shelf here with something that's more aesthetically pleasing, something that's level and uh, not broken. This is broken. It's been broken for like, I don't know, three, four, five years. I've had that shelf for a long time and it just kind of bugs me spending the time trying to make things look nice and having that sitting in there. And then a new plant at the end of the video. Hopefully that'll be coming in the mail and can have a look at it. I mentioned during the garden tour that I was going to be switching my heliconias over to a like kind of a new growing method. It's not kind of, it really is a new growing method where I'm just letting them sit here in the water. On Instagram and other sources online, people who are in Thailand and really warm climates, well, they'll take their heliconias and they just basically grow them almost like a pond plant, seemingly in mud, which I can't do that here. It wouldn't go well for the heliconias. The, every time I've tried that outside, hasn't worked well. But this water, it's nice and warm. It's 78 degrees in there. The air is nice and warm. So I ordered these baskets here. They're just like wire baskets. I think they're made for hanging over a fence or a, like a deck railing, something of that sort, to put these in here and let them just chill in the water. They've been in there for about a week now, and I'm not seeing any signs of stress. In fact, they're looking pretty decent compared to how they were looking last week. Rostrata is opening up a new leaf. So I say that's a good sign. This was all coming off of me having put the stromanthes, the trio stars, which are over there. And the same method as this right here. I did this last year with those. They're in eight inch pots and I had wicking cord hang down from the bottom of the pots going into the water. Those baskets are up higher from the surface. So that just made the most sense to use the wicking cord. I haven't added that back into those yet, but that's something I will be doing here, I don't know, eventually. I'll get to it. They've been fine so far with the water level being high. But anyways, that's the beginning of the Heliconia thing. We'll see how it goes. It's a risk, but I figured, why not? It's still early enough in the year that if they do die, then I can order some new ones, start them over a different way, and still have something to use for next year. Coming around back here, you can, you see what's good. There's just no room and things are falling over. It's just a mess over here. So I would like to get this more sorted out. The hibiscus have been doing well in this spot. I also mentioned in the garden tour how there's a fair amount of splatter coming out of that waterfall, which I don't know if switching out the table, the shelf that's in there, if that's going to make a huge difference. One thing I have noticed though, is that this hibiscus right here, not looking so hot. Lots of yellow leaves. None of the green leaves are like flaccid or flimsy, so I don't think it's a hydration thing. The soil is, I don't know, it feels consistently moist, doesn't feel wet. There's no odor coming through it from it. So I'm thinking that this is probably just a plant that gets a little bit pissy when you bring it inside. That happens with some of them, crotons. I have some other hibiscus that do that as well. The two seminal pinks though, growing wonderfully, putting out flowers. The yellow one's still flowering too. I'm gonna take all three of these back outside because the forecast isn't showing temperatures that are supposed to be drastically cold for a while. I think the coldest temperature might be like 37 in the next 10 days. So these are fine to go back outside. They don't need to be in here right now. And then hopefully I'll be able to make room for the tie and get that put over here. Okay, that's enough talking, time to get to work. Get this door put up and then I'll start moving the hibiscus out and come back and set up a new shelf. Also, absolutely beautiful weather. Lots of leaves. It's that time of year. Spending a lot of time cleaning leaves out of the pool, which is okay. I don't mind. I'm just happy that I can still get in there and work out every day. I, hmm, do we want to talk about this yet? I'm concerned that if I don't talk about this now that I'm going to completely forget with all the other stuff I have going on. I also mentioned in the last garden tour that I had some magnolias coming in the mail, the K Paris magnolias. At, here they are looking great, right? It's a nice, stick. Here's the thing though. The price was better than I was finding from other places. Locally, I wasn't able to get them. At least I wasn't going to be able to get them this year. There were actually only two websites where I found these for sale. One was Fast Growing Trees and the other one was Stark Brothers. These are from Stark Brothers. They were a hundred dollars less, I believe, than Fast Growing Trees. Fast Growing Trees had these listed on their site as being in a five gallon container. 
with no indication of what size they would be. I'm like, well, five, that doesn't tell me how big the actual plant is. So I'm not gonna spend a 180 bucks on a mystery plant. So I got these, they're good enough. They're what I would expect for a mail order tree. That's how that works, ordering baby trees. They come in looking kind of scrawny and little, no big deal. Just wait for them to grow it. As I mentioned in that tour, I'm not sure that I would be able to dig a hole where those are going even large enough for anything bigger than those. So really, I think that those are about a perfect size. Hey, Turbs, I'm sorry, you can't come with me, baby. I'm sorry. Turbo in the grow space is not something y'all want to deal with. It's a whole lot of me saying, no, no, drop it. It always has something in his mouth. It's a curious puppy. I don't know if I ever talked about this before. This is just, it's egg crate. It's a panel that goes underneath fluorescent lighting or just any of the drop ceiling lights where the light diffusers goes. It's cheap stuff. Well, it used to be cheap. These things aren't that cheap anymore. Usually I buy these to cut them up, break them up, and you can zip tie them back together to create little tables for like coral fragments. You probably do that with like plug starting for hydroponics. This is just an extra I had. It was up here to just create a little bit more shelf space. That's all that was. I have a feeling this is, this probably gonna be something gross. I bet there's probably some creepy crawlies inside this thing too. Come on, there we go. And then this down here behind this hole, behind this leg, that is just a little tray that's filled up with hydrostone. Can't remember which kind, it's just a hydroponic material. There's some lava rock in there too. This was actually made to go over a fish tank, any fish tank that's 30 inches long. This would have fit on top and you could use as like an aquaponics thing. I never did that. Didn't seem worth it to me to sacrifice that much space on top of the fish tank to grow lettuce inside of my fish poop water. So I used it in here as biological filtration for when I had fish in here. I don't really have fish in here. There are a few, so maybe I'll keep this and keep using it, but I'm not sure. Uh, oh, it's gonna stink. There's water inside of the pieces here. I had to drill holes in these so that they would sink. Oh yeah, that's got a stink to it. I'm glad this is getting out of here. New shelf. Not the most exciting thing I know when we're just talking about aesthetics, but I'm gonna be able to fit more plants on top of this. And that's the entire point with this, right? Is to be able to get more of the plants that like a lot of moisture over in this spot, get all the water and humidity and airflow they want without having that egg crate thing on top. Also, I haven't even peeked at the directions. I should probably do that because there are a fair amount of pieces here. Usually these are pretty self-explanatory, but I see a few things that don't really know what they're for. I'm assuming these go on the ends of the shelves there. It's what they look like. There are all these pieces that need to be punched out. And those are the ones where I'm like, eh, I don't know. Those I just assumed go on the bottom to protect the floor. The rest of it, I don't know. I'll look at the directions and did I screw up yet? <laughs> Maybe. I like how this says step one. Turn it over. No more steps on the other side. So this is just a one step thing. And step one is to just do everything. Just put it together. There's your first step. And good thing I looked at the directions because these go on top, not on the bottom. Not entirely certain what the heck's going on at the bottom here. Looks like some of these little cuppy things and then some of these couple looking things. That's it. So it's looking like this goes into this. Yes, there's a screw sort of thing on there. Oh, is that what they meant by adjustable legs? There are those adjustable legs. I guess that is technically what that is. Suppose that's nifty if you can't keep it level, that would be a good thing to have. But does this fit? Kind of, not really. I wonder what these are for. Can't see anything in the picture that looks at all like these. But as much as I appreciate the jackassery of just saying step one and then do everything, it would have been nice if there were some steps because I just learned that you have to put this yellow piece, those down there, kind of see them. Those are the end caps to the shelves and they have a hole in them that these have to go in. So I just went through and put all these little pieces together. I gotta pull them back out. Not that big of a deal, they pop right out. Is any of that in focus? It's so foggy in here right now from the humidifier, making it so I can't really tell if things are blurry through the viewfinder or if that's just the humidity coming through. Also try to remember not to make stupid loud banging noises while I have a microphone on. Hopefully I was able to edit that out. If not, my apologies. Such smart asses. Step one, just do it. I can kind of appreciate that. If there were screws and nuts and bolts, those types of things involved, I would not be happy about that. One, two, three, throw some legs in there, and then looks like the yellow pieces just snap on in. It's looking like now I just go through, put the legs on, and then keep doing that yellow piece on each shelf until I get to the top, put the end caps on. Still don't know what the heck this thing's for, but I, maybe I'll figure it out at some point. I forgot there was a piece 
diagram on here. Okay, so that is to interlock. I know nobody probably cares, but I feel like since I brought it up, I should talk about it. That little piece is you can interlock multiple shelves together. Cool, nice, neat feature. I'm gonna finish putting this together. I didn't drill holes in it like I did with the other ones. Remember I mentioned how it floated, so it had water and that water got really stinky. This has these channels in there and it looks like they go all the way through. My fingers aren't hitting anything, so the water should go in there and they shouldn't float, but at least that's how it seems. If not, no big deal, I'll drill some holes in it. Okay, moment of truth, Let's see if this fits. That was one thing I forgot to bring up was that with these heliconia pots there, which was the entire reason I even started talking about them, those might stick out too much to get this to fit. Oh no, I think this will work. There we go, plenty of room. Oh, that looks so much better. I don't know if I need to do the top shelf on here or not. There's another shelf that could go on here, but I don't, I don't think I want the plants to be up that high. I think this is good. Don't know what I'm gonna do with the extra shelf. I could just put it together as a little table and stick it somewhere else, I suppose, use it for storage. Should work perfectly. Aquaponics tray, that will fit right down in there perfectly. And doesn't that look better? It blends right in with that so much more nicely. Not that it really matters. I'm about to have like hoses and pipes and stuff all over it. It's all right to be excited about the little improvements. Little things can go a long way. I'll get the waterfall and stuff hooked back up and have a look at it from the other side. This isn't the best angle to be checking this out at. I was actually thinking before I go back over there, I might go ahead and move the tie, bring that around right into this corner perhaps. It's just this plant, it's hard to tell when you're not actually here with the plant, but it probably has about a 10 foot spread on it. It's freaking huge. So wherever it goes, it's beautiful, but it's also just a monumental pain in the butt to try and walk around. It can't stay back there. It's not near any of the lights. Go ahead and get that moved over here and then we finish up step one. Almost done with step one. This looks so much better. It'd look even better if you couldn't see some of the recycling I have hanging out back there behind everything. So the hibiscus aren't there. So doesn't block them anymore. Got the tie moved over, which this, that's, I, 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 what was I thinking? The heater, it's right there. That's probably gonna crisp those leaves up. So I need to do a rotation or something with that plant. I absolutely love this plant. Just large form, Monstera deliciosa in general, whether it's variegated or not, I think has some of the most beautiful leaves, but holy crap, they take up a ton of space. And this one still has a lot of growing left to do on it. I'm not there yet, but it probably won't be that long until I give this thing a chop, just because it's going to get unmanageable, not too long. I, like I said, I don't really even know what to do with it at this point. Just have to keep scooting it around and find a way to make it work. I put a carbon filter pad on top for the water to trickle through just to help out with that odor of the water that was stagnant inside the old shelf. It's, the odor is already mostly faded and I have an air filter that's up over here. I don't know. Nope. Oh, you can't see it. It's a odor scrubber. Traditionally used for people who are growing cannabis. I have it out here as an air filter because sometimes I use seaweed extracts and those things to fertilize and that's just a smell that I absolutely detest. It's horrible. So that helps with the odor and it helps with medium sized particles in the air because there's a filter sleeve on there. I, it, I wouldn't consider it to be like a clean air filter, but it helps. I have to take the filter. Okay, I'll show you. Talk about that much, may as well show you. See that right there? That's the like fleece covering. That has to come off out every month to get washed. But I would say that means that it is getting junk out of there, which is nice. Lots of dust and dirt in the area. There is more room on top of this. This shelf is 48 by 20. The old one was 36 by, I believe, 12. I don't know if I'm actually going to put more plants on top of this or not. Time will tell. Still in the beginning stages of things. I'm not used to being in here this time of year, period. Uh, well, I guess last year I was because we had a cold snap, but normally it's just like get them inside and I'm not even to this phase until basically January because I used to not be able to run many of the heaters because of the Christmas lights, but that all got Sort out last year with a new breaker, new heater, all that fun stuff. So this is this is good. I think that that looks much, much, much better, much more pleasing to the eyes. It's level. There is more room for more plants, but with these plants hanging over that edge, don't know what I can do with that. I can't arrange the plants out here to any kind of permanent situation just yet. I mean to talk about this, but I keep forgetting. I have talked about how I have a new rack to set up over here. I haven't done that yet. 
because these windows that are in here, which you, you can't really see that one, almost all the windows on the house in I think early December or late November, they're all coming out, getting all new trim on the inside and outside, new windows with the exception of I think one, two, three, four windows that are totally fine, don't need to be changed out, the rest of them. The whole house is getting renovation in that regard. So whatever's over here, I'm gonna have to move in about three and a half to four and a half weeks. I don't, I don't know, I'm just not that gung-ho on spending a ton of time organizing everything where I'm gonna have to strip it all apart and figure out what to do with everything for a day or so while they get the new windows installed over here. Ideally, I will have the Monstera here. I'll probably have to turn it so that leaf isn't getting blasted by the heater. I'm gonna bring the large croton over into this area too. And basically I have a few feet back here where I can put some larger plants in a row. There needs to be a gap to get at, just a fire safety thing. There needs to be a gap in all directions because that space heater that's up there. And then I'm going to be hopefully leaving more room on the other side because I have to remember in January and February, there will probably be multiple days where I have to bring in the mule palms, which are very large now, and two of the windmill palms, and I have like the fatsias and oleanders and just the cold hardy plants that are out there. And normally those get stacked up over there and they make it really hard to get around. I want to have an actual spot for them now that things are more, <laughs> are going to be more organized over here. Not really there yet, but moving in that direction. So this is a step in that direction of just getting something out, getting something new put in with some more space on it. The croton, I need to move it. It's so hard to water it over there. You see how thirsty it is? It's really hard to get the water over there. So that I will take care of. But for now, I'm gonna say this is good. I don't have much more I can do because I'm in a standstill waiting to find out what's going on with the windows. So I don't want to set up the new racking system if I'm just gonna have to pull it apart and move everything. That doesn't make sense to me. So at this point, we just chill out and hopefully in a day or two, gonna have a fun new plant coming in the mail. I'm a plant that I'm very, very excited about. I cannot wait for y'all to see it. So maybe that'll be what happens next. I don't know. What did you do, Turbo? What did you do? See that? That's not supposed to happen. Another tripod bites the dust. Good job, Turbo. It happens, it fell over. He ran up to it, grabbed it, ripped the uh, neck of it off. So now it's two pieces. I can probably glue it back together. I'm just doing some odd and end fall cleaning things, things I should have done quite a while ago, really, with this bonsai here, which is just looking, this is why I turned the camera on, because y'all have to see this. Like, come on. Isn't that just looking beautiful? Japanese maple bonsai that is just overflowing with teeny tiny little weeds down here to get those cleared out. I don't fret too much over like a leaf pile up in there during the winter time because it really, I feel just helps insulate the plant in the long run for the winter time. But during the winter with this one, I normally take this down around the corner and I'll pile leaves up around the entire thing to right around here or so. That does a pretty good job at protecting it during the winter time. It's easy enough to do. I used to take my bonsais and <laughs> dump them into the mulch piles that I would have around the banana trees, which worked fairly well, but there were some casualties. So I decided that maybe I should stop doing that. I don't think there's enough airflow inside those mulch piles for the bark to breathe in. Sometimes they end up rotting and that's no good. Don't want that to happen. Bonsais are a thing of patience, right? Don't want to destroy them. Of course, taking your time when it comes to protecting these during the winter. because You don't want to throw away years and years and years of patience working with these plants. You've spent all that time carefully pruning them and wiring them and I say carefully, <laughs> see the things bonsai people do to their plants, just shredding them to pieces, but that's that's part of it. That's how you get the miniaturization going. This one has actually fallen pretty far behind on its pruning. There really isn't anything I can do about that this time of year. I probably could come in here and give this a prune and a cleanup, but I'm not going to. I don't want to mess with it this time of year. It's looking so nice. I don't want to cut anything out of it if I don't have to. Thinking I'll probably leave these little bits of oxalis in here. I don't mind them. So you don't they look nice, especially if they were in focus and you could see what I'm talking about? Yeah, those look nice. They add some nice fine detail. I'm going to try and come in and get all these itty bitty tiny bits of stem out from those weeds that were in here and make sure none of those strawberries are off those strawberries. They take over everything. That looks better, much better. I uh, changed my mind. The leaves are bothering me. It's taking away from the rock detail. Some leaves are okay, but I don't want them covering up everything. Yeah, 
There we go. Should I prune it? I do want to open it up, but also, no, never mind. I'm not going to prune it. Yeah, I think it'd be best to go ahead and wait. I want all that new growth to harden out for next year. So stinking beautiful. I cannot remember what variety of Japanese maple this is, and I don't have a tag in here. I had this one for a long time. It was in a training pot for several years, and it just got potted up into this larger container a couple of years ago. I don't know where the tag went. It's a variety that's supposed to stay dwarf as it is, so it's kind of cheating when it comes to bonsai. I know that this doesn't look great, but it's still doing its thing. Should I take this into the grow space? Should I take an attempt at overwintering it in there and see what happens? I don't usually have luck overwintering the sun and patience inside. If they go like one day being too thirsty, they just shrivel, never come back. The potty mix that they're set up with in there is just like a magnet for fungus, fungus, <laughs> for fungus gnats. I guess I could give it a try. I don't know if I will. Just gave the magnolias a really big soak. I was going to plant them this evening, but I think I should let them suck in that moisture because it was pretty dry today and breezy and I don't want to mess with plants that are thirsty. And back on this, yes, back on whether or not to take that inside. I'm trying to create more space in there for plants that I really love and enjoy. Been weeding through plants that I'm just like, eh, you know, if it's something that I just don't really care about, doesn't do anything for me, there's no reason to keep it. Been getting rid of those, trying to make room. I have, there, there are a lot of plants coming in the mail over the next few weeks that are gonna be going into the growth space. Mostly small things, so I'll be able to have plenty of room for those for a while, but as you saw with the Thai, with the Monstera, they grow, and I have to take that into account. Also, if I were to take a sun and patient inside, wouldn't it make more sense to dig up one of those over there, cut it back and take that in, instead of the scraggly thing back there? Wouldn't it really make sense to try and create space for that thing when I have these much nicer looking ones? Okay, and then back on the pruning, I just keep messing with it and thinking like, okay, if I were to go in here and send out some of that and then pull some of this out, maybe wire this branch and be able to get those layers back in here, but I don't, I won't, I'll wait. Late winter, early spring, just sort of the safe zone. I don't, I really don't know how much it matters with the Japanese maple as long as you're not in an extreme of any kind, so extreme heat or extreme cold. Otherwise, fine detail pruning like with that shouldn't really matter, but just to be safe, I'll wait. Another reason that I do like to wait is because the more growth that the plant has on it going into winter, and that's the more space there is for dieback if we have some kind of crazy cold. So if there's an extra six inches here that I'd want to cut off of that more thin stuff, then in theory, then when those cold winds come through and dry out ends of the wood and kill it, then that's, then I can cut that. Does that, am I make it works in my head. I don't think that that's the reality of the situation though, so don't, this is just rambling. Don't take any of it to heart. Talking about things that are flowering, that's a whole different situation. Yeah, I'm not wasting time taking that thing inside. On this, sitting over in the corner by my potting stuff, it's just a couple of tiny little variegated alocasias. No idea where they came from. Not a clue, just a leftover pot with some old soil in it. I'm glad they're not dead. We got down to, what, mid-20s? They were up against the wall, so that does make some sense. I'm gonna remember to take this inside. There's no rush right now. Not gonna have any cold or, like, extreme cold for a week, week and a half, something like that. I don't know. That's what's going on out here right now. Some picking up to do, some planting to do. I'm gonna hold off on that. If I can get the tripod glued back together, I'll bring y'all along for the planting stuff tomorrow. If not, then pick up when the new plant gets here, the one I've been waiting for and hopefully I'll have a tripod by then. Otherwise I'll be holding the camera like this and trying to open things with, it's not gonna go well, but I'm excited about the plant, so who cares? We'll get to look at the plant. Might be a little bit shaky, that's all right. Couple of days have passed, got the shipment notification yesterday that the plant was in the mail and on its way here. I had it overnighted just because, well, I, we'll talk about that. Can't even see the plant yet, probably just what, oh, I should be overlaying a video right now. I did film the unboxing, there was a lot of noise in the background, so no audio, it's just, you know, here's a box. You know, it's typical plant stuff. Plant was packaged well, in a box, wrapped in paper, had the fluff all in there. There was a heat pack and then another sort of heat pack, more of a temperature regulator pack that I paid extra for to have thrown in there just because the weather's so unpredictable in November. And I ordered this a couple of weeks ago, so I really didn't know what the weather was going to be like. Now, here it is, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Look at all that variegation. It does have some stuff going on with it. That's why I paid to have it overnighted. The variegated elbow, or I guess all the elbows are variegated. 
The Albo Monsteras, the parts that are white like this, they tend to be fragile and bruise very easily. And with the weather being so unpredictable this time of year, I figured it would be best with a plant that I've wanted for such a long time. Go ahead and spend the extra just to make sure that it would be safe and protected. I got this from Back Basics Greenhouse on Etsy. I have been wanting an elbow for a pretty long time. I just wouldn't want to spend the money on a cutting or on a stick. With the amount of money that the cuttings cost, I would rather spend more to get a plant that is already somewhat established, has done some growing. Couldn't bring myself to spend hundreds of dollars on a little stick with maybe one leaf coming out of it. Sometimes they'll have a root, sometimes not. You just have to hunt around until you find a good price. Back Basics Greenhouse on Etsy has like a dent and scratch section and that's where I found this one. So this is probably from shipping right here. Their pictures were all very good so you knew what you were getting. So there's some damaged foliage there. There's another one right here where that leaf isn't looking too good. You can see where a leaf was pruned off back there and another one up here in the back or right up at the top. See that right there? The elbows grow pretty fast, so I wasn't concerned about that. And finding a Monstera elbow that has this many leaves on it that's established into its containers that they get very, very pricey when they get to have this much going on with them. But since it was a scratch and dent, got a great deal on it. I let it sit in my cart for a couple days. I went ahead and I jumped on it. An issue I've had in the past or just a mistake that I <laughs> did a very good job at correcting this year is that the, it's hard to do plant unboxings during the winter time once everything's here in the grow space because I don't like to have plants shipped when it's like 15 degrees outside. So this year I made sure in October to get online and just make a list of my wish list plants that I would like to have growing out here things I'd like to add to the collection, things that I had planned for and made space <laughs> to have out here. And then I just, I went ham ordering plants. It was a lot of fun. So as I've been alluding to it, there will be a lot of plants coming in the mail over the next few weeks. Don't know when I'm going to be showing them. This one, it's just, it's something that I can't hide. I figured I'd just show it to you right as it's here because it's something that's going to be seen in the background. It's going to stand out a lot more than some of the other plants that are coming. But over the next few weeks, you may notice some plants showing up in the background and I'm just, I'm not gonna talk about them until later. I wanna unbox the plants. I'll film that part, but that's really just so people can see like shipping quality, how the plant arrived. Then I wanna have the plant for a while and finish those videos and talk about how it's either improved or maybe not improved. Maybe I've done something wrong with those plants that'll be coming and give more of a story to the experience with the plant. Instead of just say, hey, look, I spent money on something and here it is. I don't, I don't know. That's just, it's a, a dangerous road to go down with the youtube -y stuff where it's just like spending money left and right. That's not why I did it. I wanted to have this in my collection. Everything that's coming are things that I have wanted for a long time, or maybe they're things that I've had in the past and then got rid of them, or maybe they died. Who knows? It's, it's a different story behind everything that's coming. Some of them are just little starts that are gonna take some time to grow. Just mentioning that now, cause like I said, there's gonna be some things showing up in the background. People can be like, uh, where'd that come from? But you just have to wait and see. So I wanna be able to talk about my experience with those plants instead of just ripping it out of a box and saying, hey, here it is. And back to the elbow. Do I need to explain why I like this plant so much? I mean, can you look, look at it? As far as variegated plants are concerned, the elbow is probably in my top three. My favorite variegation, this could be a separate video. Should I even be talking about this now? The Musa Florida, Musa IIAA, however you wanna pronounce that. That's always been my absolute favorite for variegation. Have grown them in the past, absolute pain in the butt. Probably never going to do it again, except now I have a space where I do think one would probably thrive. It's very warm and humid in here and the lighting's intense, but I just, eh. I don't know, even under the most ideal conditions like our botanical gardens, they struggle growing them. So this were 10 years ago and they were cheaper. Not that those were ever cheap. Cheapest ever saw of those was like 80 bucks. And that's, that was considered absolutely absurd back in the day. All that aside, one of my favorites, I love when variegation has the fades in it where it fades from the different shades of green into the white. And it's not necessarily a stripey, patchy yellow type of variegation. I'm not, not into the yellows. And it looks like this one has quite a bit of character. Every single leaf that comes out of there is going to be a surprise. Some of them potentially having too much white on them. I think that's okay. This one right here though, I really wouldn't have an issue cutting that one off. It's not going to do much for the plant. For now, I'm just going to leave this be, take care of it, obviously, right? Not just gonna like set it adrift. 
to let it go out and die. I'm not going to mess with repotting it for a little bit. Want to give this some more time to adjust from being shipped. Let whatever bruising is going to happen in there happen so I can determine whether or not I want to prune it. And I'm waiting for some stuff to come in the mail so that I can make up a big bin of a nice aeroid mix to get this potted into and a bunch of other things that are coming. So I also just, I don't really have the stuff to repot it right now and it's potted, so why would I bother with that right now? Were you wondering about the other variegated plants? We'll probably talk about that in a different video some other time. I like the Pinatum, that's a beautiful one, and the Stuttgart Canna. That Stuttgart has gorgeous variegation, similar to the Misophorta, so there's, there's that, the Albo. It's in there, top three, top five. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. I did have one of these an extremely long time ago. It was a prolific grower, did not have this kind of variegation on them. This one already has a nice start to it. There's already a fair amount of stem there, especially for what I paid for it. This thing was a bargain. So we'll all get to watch this grow, get big, and see the new leaves that come out. Every new leaf is going to be a surprise. The leaves are already fenestrated, so that's nice. Don't have to wait for that to start to come out and express itself. Just give it a couple weeks, get it repotted onto a support, and then you just get to sit back and watch it grow and take cuttings and get those going and probably do giveaways because it's a plant that should eventually be growing fairly prolifically. It's gonna take it a moment, get into a new container, get those roots settled in. It will take off. This is not a plant where I care about chopping. I'll cut it, propagate it, no problem. There's that, there's the elbow. Got some bruising, some dents and scratches. I'm totally fine with that. Y'all know how we do things out here. Things can get pretty rough in the grow space. I'm not paying attention. Sometimes the dogs come out and run around. So I have to make sure it's not set someplace where Labrador tails or random birds that fly in here can get to it and cause more bruising like what's over here. Otherwise, it's a Monstera. Should be fine, might be an adjustment period for it. I'm loving those leaves. So much color. It's a variegation where you get an extreme difference from leaf to leaf and it doesn't just kind of throw out the same thing. I have the bird's nest fern over here, which does have some variation in the variegation, but for the most part, each leaf that comes out should look fairly similar. Most of the variation that comes with that bird's nest fern really is more about how many pests get to it than anything. That thing is a snail magnet. That's neither here nor there. You can sit back and enjoy the new elbow. I'm really liking this leaf. Like, I don't even care that that's been cut out of there. That deeper green, absolutely beautiful. It's right here, this part. See that? Where it has the deeper green into the white with the light green, almost like shades of grayish blue. Love that, makes me happy. And so that's it, that's the unboxing. The first one of many to come that will be spread out throughout the winter months. You probably won't be getting to those on the channel until like, I don't know, December, January. I really wanna make sure I have the plants for a moment to be able to see some sort of growth or be able to give some sort of report on what's been going on with the plants other than just, hey, look, I bought something and I'm taking it out of a box. It's a fun week, waiting for my elbow. A lot happened, more like home stuff. Got a new furnace today. That was exciting. It's been in the 80s in the house all week. I haven't been sleeping great, so looking forward to sleeping with some cold air. The furnace has the blower in it, which blows the cold. If you were wondering, I know the furnace heats the air, but that's where the blower is that runs the AC. That's what that is. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole. Just overall happy to be ending the week on a high note. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. Y'all growing the elbows or just any small form monsteras? Do you have a favorite? Monstera form. I really like that. I saw it on Kaylee's channel. What with the tricolor. That is a stunning plant. Just the one though. It's just that one large form tricolor that's in the, I think it was on a Reddit post. That's it. All the other ones I see, I'm like, eh, but that one and that picture, stunning. Love that plant. Love this one too. Love all my babies. They don't have to be variegated. They don't have to be fancy. Don't have to be rare, that's what you want to call it. And there's a better shot of that variegation, a little bit closer up to see what I'm talking about. This plant, very prone to bruising, the littlest thing, and these get blemishes on them, which you wouldn't think, they have a nice thick, oh, that's gonna go. Okay, that's it. as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.